So welcome to our second panel of the day here at Cape, and uh, thanks so much for being here. My name is Bill with uh, Boom 1019. Uh, we've got our Degrassi panel. We're very excited to have with us, yeah, Pat Mastriani, Stacy Mistichin, and Shane Kippel. Thank you very much for all being here. Uh, I am a huge fan. That's why I told Randy that if you're going to put me on this, I will be <laughs> very mad at him and Carol. Uh, so I'm glad them I'm here. Uh, I, I was a big fan. I, I know everybody in this room is a big fan, and they've got lots of questions and lots of, uh, yeah, <laughs> Gail, Gail knows. She's a huge fan. Uh, and uh, and we're, we're just really excited. Now, we know you guys have been here before. Uh, Shane, it's your first time here? This is my first time to Cape. Uh, but we know Pat and Stacy have been here before, and we love that you came back. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I saw your booth quite busy today with people looking for pictures and, uh, and, uh, and attire and stuff like that, so it's great. Uh, and I love that you're wearing the hat. Well, <laughs> it's not the hat, but, no, it's, but a hat. it's a hat. It's a fedora. <laughs> um, hey, you know what? Uh, everyone's been great so far today. It's been a real pleasure and also reacquainting with so many people after so many years yeah. since we were here in 2019. Uh, it's wonderful that so many fans have come back just to say hi again, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, that's mostly why Stacy and I kind of started the Degrassi tour so that yeah. we could go around and meet with fans and, and let them know that we appreciate that they've been loyal all these decades and, yeah. and now we're able to bring Shane Kippel into yeah. the mix who's yeah. representing his generation of the yeah. series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just been wonderful so thank you for for you know, love Randy love, and Carol for having us here. back do you guys uh, so when you travel around as you know a Degrassi group and, and meet fans are you uh, do you go wow I there's so many people that just love what we did so long ago. Is it is it mind boggling, or you or you go, yep, yeah, no, this is we knew this was the way it was going to be. <laughs> I'm, I'm always surprised if yeah. someone shows up. <laughs> <laughs> I have no expectations. Give yourself some credit. <laughs> no. Um, no, no, go go ahead. No, no, I'm I'm always pleasantly surprised, yeah. but I mean. Um, I know that we have like a loyal fan base and you guys are awesome. But yeah, it's always, you just never know what circumstances are going to be. And it's it just, I'm delighted. So <laughs> yeah, I, I always say that um, with social media and so many ways to uh, actually access the, the celebrities, uh, whoever, uh, these days you can correspond with fans, whereas uh, a long time ago the, there was no way. You could see them at a convention, you could see them on a red carpet wave, and that was about it. So when I talk to fans now and I hear that, like, how I hold Seinfeld and, and curb your enthusiasm uh, in high regard in my life, that's how many people felt about Degrassi. And it's so flattering and mind-boggling, and it, it never gets old, but the longer it's been since I'm... Um, we were all done on the show, it puts it all in perspective how special a time it was for us to film it mm -hmm. and how much it meant to people and how much it still means. And, you know, 10 years later, 20 years later, mm -hmm. it, it's still going strong. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is the longevity of the show, uh, the, the topics that were, were discussed and, and, and brought to the screen on both series uh, were so prevalent at the time. Um, did you guys understand what you were doing back then? I mean, with some of those tackling some of those subjects, was it was is it just, oh, this is just the show, and, you know, I guess people, kids go through this, but did you guys really kind of get it? I, th I think we always knew um, that we were dealing with delicate subject matter, that it was important stuff, but I don't think we ever could have predicted, um, I don't think it really hit us that we were, like, groundbreaking, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, that that nobody else was doing that because to us it was like okay this makes sense we're having a good conversation about this um i mean because the show when it first started wasn't as big as it was now mm -hmm. so um yeah i think we just we felt good about what we were doing but we could never have foreseen like to what degree it was going to affect people yeah. and um do you mind if i talk in your place no, no. Um, I think I speak for Pat when I say no. no. Um, but um, I, I always felt that it, it was um, at the beginning uh, when you're on a, a show like this and, and you know uh, the impact that it's having on people um, and the, the conversations that you're able to, to spark um, with 
um, like between uh, you know children and their parents, things that they uh, didn't have the courage to bring up before, and then they, they see it on TV. They're like, okay, I need I someone already you know broke the ground on this. Um, it it kind of for me it was an adjustment because I I was I was an actor I was a kid I, I was sort of green it's like I don't feel like I'm I deserve the praise the the writers the creators of the show they're they're the ones that did the research and have their their finger on the pulse of what's going yeah. on and I'm just you know I'm I'm here playing a character trying to remember my lines and but like <laughs> uh, the thing about being the cast is you end up being the face of that franchise and with that comes a, a responsibility um, to uh, to be respectful of the storylines and to take everything that comes along with it. So um, at first, there's at least for me, it's a bit of like imposter syndrome where people are like, "You you help me come out of the closet. You help me do this." And like I, I like, it. but eventually you're like, "I thank you so yeah. thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that." I could have helped in that way at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do remember we used to have workshops before every season to discuss some of the topics that we would have on that particular season. Um, and they always would start off the season by reminding us that we weren't trained therapists, that we were kids, that we were actors playing roles, and that we, as much as we feel like we know a lot, we really don't, and we have no right to give advice especially during interviews or when we meet fans on the street, because they would come up to Amanda Steptoe, who played Spike, and say, you know, I, I really love your character, and, 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 you know, do you think I should sleep with my boyfriend because he says he really loves me and he cares for me? And like, Amanda had never had sex in real life. Yeah. And, and people would write letters or yeah. see her on the street and want advice from her. And, and, and so it was, there's a balance, right, between what Shane said that, you know, there, there's an army of people, of writers, that, that do the, his, the, the research, and, and put in the time and everything. We're just the ones that get to reap the rewards of their hard work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it is a delicate balance between saying, hey, thanks for being a fan of the show, but, yeah. you know, it was a character and we That's just right. played a part, a yeah. small part. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's interesting yeah. when, when people yeah. connect us to those, those characters that we play. Well, and, that, and that's just it. When you, when you break it down like that, you know, you are actors playing a character, and yet you're bringing to life some really very deep topics mm -hmm that families all over the country are going through, and, and that, that's great advice from the writers and, and the people, the producers of the show. Mm -hmm. You're not therapists, you're just playing a character, but I'm sure you guys got that all the time mm -hmm. yeah. with, uh, with fans as you went around uh, doing, you know, whatever it is you were doing between, uh, between yeah. seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please come on up, step up to the mic, and, uh, and uh, we, can, we can have a chat. Um, do you guys still speak to uh, a lot of the cast members? Is there uh, people you see more often than others? or <laughs> Either one? Yes. You guys pick no. it, yeah? <laughs> um, well, I, I see uh, this man quite frequently, mm -hmm. too frequently. <laughs> uh, Stacy uh, comes in and out of my life, and it's, it's always uh, you know, a ray of sunshine when she does. Um, yeah, I, um, we, I luckily got to spend a fair amount of time with the, uh, we used to call them the, uh, the old cast, and then we started saying like, no, the, the classic or the originals, you know, to be a little bit more respectful, but uh, let's be honest. Sugar yeah, no, right? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, it was really nice because they, they had paved the way for us, and they, they sort of, they took us under uh, their wing and told us about like what to expect and, and things to like watch out for and not get to, uh, far ahead of ourselves because it's you know it's a fun industry but it it has its uh, its dark sides and yeah. it can be fickle and people love you people hate you so yeah. like uh, lots of uh, good advice in the early days and um just like high school with uh, with my generation like you you're friends and you, you all hang out and and then you're done with the show and you stay in touch with some of them and some of them you lose touch with quickly some you hang on for a while it's 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 like working anywhere, but sure. I, I feel like lots of people when you're when you're on a TV show, they they want to hope that you're all still like you're all <laughs> hanging out all the time. <laughs> but it, it's just like it's like anywhere that you work, like your friends while you're working, and then you start working yeah. somewhere else, and then you make new friends there. And yeah. yeah, but we anytime we hang out, still it, it's all just no ice breaking. It's back to. Social media has been a fantastic way to stay That's in touch too, with yeah. some yeah. of the cast members. You know, one small quick example is Irene Karakos, who played Alexa, okay. lives in Greece with her husband and, and her daughters. And every time I post something, she has a comment. Oh, yeah. I love that, Pat. Or, or, so it's nice to know that even though we're not 
talking right now or we're yeah. not together right now. She knows what's going on in my life and I know what's going on in her life and it's, it's nice. So in that aspect, I, I do appreciate social media and what it does. Um, but the reality is, you know, many of us have moved on. Moved on and doing other, other things. Yeah. When we did uh, Palooza a few mm-hmm. years ago now, um, a lot of us hadn't seen each other since the show. So wow. like 25, 30 wow. years. Yeah. So it was like a real reunion for yeah. all of us. Yeah. And uh, it was weird at first, <laughs> to be honest, because it's like seeing people that were part of your, your childhood. That, yeah. And some yeah. parts of your childhood weren't pleasant necessarily. Sure, <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, you know, you kind of regress some things and then you're not sure how you're going to feel when you see like not like personal issues with cast no. members, but just that part of your life. And um, it was kind of therapeutical to, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Um, seeing everybody and kind of, you know, uh, being able to embrace our past in a positive way yeah. and like move on from it, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, uh, it was good. Yeah. It was helpful. It was closure for some people. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the um, <laughs> and for others, the only way I could describe it to you, what this little Degrassi Palooza uh, reunion gathering was about, imagine going to your high school reunion and then you and a few of your friends have to go on stage and talk about your whole high school experience in yeah. front of the entire <laughs> yeah. assembly. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you know, it was just very intimate and it was, it was weird, it was yeah. surreal. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is that the fans knew more about the show than we did. Yeah. Yeah. And um, our hosts had rewatched the entire series recently, so they were very up to speed on this, each episode. And, mm-hmm. and many of us hadn't even watched what the show the in show? 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our co-creator and director, Kit Hood, He's like, yeah, sorry, I don't remember that episode. It's, it's gone from my memory. And so jokes and good times. Yeah. And, and really, it was about the fans having the opportunity to go to that mic and share their story and their experience with us and, and tell us why they were so connected and still connected. Yeah. Why did this lady just fly from Australia <laughs> to come to Toronto to meet us? Like, yeah. that's insane. And she explained that connection that she had to the show. So it was really nice, that, that's that back and forth. Yeah. I will say this. I've never been to my actual high school reunion, <laughs> but I went to the Degrassi yeah. high school reunion because yeah. in a way I feel like they were more my family growing up than in real life. Yeah. It was weird. It was like yeah. a dual life. Like and uh, for Next Generation, we had uh, the Drake video. The Drake music video was like our high school reunion. So there even though fans weren't there on set to uh, uh, to have a Q&A, and, um, it, it was just many of us at that point hadn't seen each other in about 20 years. And the cast was so large that even uh, for the ones that we had seen more recently, it had, there might have never been a time that we were all on set together. Because if, if you have 20 cast, odds are like there, there aren't more than five of you filming on yeah. the same day and you're, you're passing like ships in the night, especially if your storylines don't intersect. You're, you're not seeing each other. But then we had like 25 cast on set um, on our old set that they put back together specifically for the music video, and no. that it, it was—I didn't go to, uh, to my high school reunion either, but <laughs> that was that was definitely it. It felt it, exactly like a high school reunion yeah. should, I think. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, how did Drake uh, take it when you told me he couldn't come to Cornwall uh, <laughs> for this? <laughs> I'm sure he was pretty Listen, upset. He's writing a song about it, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, you bring up the fact that you had somebody coming from Australia, and we know that the show's popularity in Canada was great, but it was an international success, both uh, both shows. Mm-hmm. What Do um, you, you get some like uh, the difference when it comes to Canadian viewers? Uh, as opposed to say U.S. or Australian or, or European viewers, like, what what what's the biggest difference between the, the type of viewer, like, and, and the fan of the show? Uh, well, we don't necessarily know what the differences are, yeah. but I, I know that culturally things are different in different yeah. countries. But kids are kids, you know. Yes, you could be a, a, a kid in China, let's say, or a, a kid in India, but you know, you, you still deal with a lot of the similar issues like, you know, pimples and <laughs> first crushes and, and things of that nature. So, yes, you may not get some of the North American um, 
uh, subtleties that, yeah. that the, the show uh, talks about. But I think everybody can relate to, you know, uh, losing a best friend or, you know, going out for your driver's license or something like, to that matter. Were you were you asking about, like, the, the way that fans Just, recognize yeah, is, you? It, yeah, or, or, or Yeah, is there a difference between Canadian fans and fans that are, like... Like they, getting recognized they abroad. Take, well, did they of? take the show a little differently than oh, we did? You know what I mean? Do you get I different questions right from them? Right yeah. You know, is that... Is it like the cultural? There's a, there's a cultural difference, and, and Pat, you hit it. But it's just is was are they different from Canadian? Like you know, we're pretty easygoing, and yeah. you know, yeah. but they seem to be maybe a little more into the show. I mean, geez, if if our show aired in South Korea, maybe there might be a real <laughs> difference yeah. culturally, and yeah. they wouldn't understand certain things yeah. that that we're we're doing. But I think for the most part, I, uh, kids around the world That's, are yeah. similar in, in their experiences. Yeah. Just small changes yeah, that culturally absolutely. would, would yeah. Great. make it unique. Question, the, the mic's open, so please, go ahead. I was just going to the bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll wait, that's okay, we'll wait for you. What's the password? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't fly in from Australia, I did uh, drive an hour and a half from Montreal. No. So nice, yeah. very nice. Whoa. Thank you. No, it's uh, almost there. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um, the question I, I wanted to ask was, it, it's true that when I when I was watching the the topics that were uh, tackled, you know, like were some were pretty heavy. I thought, you know, sometimes like uh, was there some episodes for you guys? Well, especially the the first generation that I watched uh, that you thought, and since you were so young yourselves, that wow, this is heavy stuff. Like for me, the one. Uh, that stands out for me is the suicide, you know, uh, the the Claude character there. That was really heavy, I thought. So I was wondering, maybe that particular episode, uh, is that something that you thought was really heavy or? For sure. Um, definitely that one. And like Pat had said, we did, uh, and I'm sure it was the same for you too, Shane. Like, did you workshop all the, the scripts beforehand? Mm, uh, well, we had our, our read-throughs and we, we would talk about like if the language was appropriate and we'd talk about the subject matter a little bit, but in terms of like any sort of uh, like psychological preparation for it, is that what you're talking about? Or, mm -hmm. or are you talking yeah. about a little bit? <laughs> no, a little bit. No, no, we didn't really. There, we, had, we had workshops at the beginning of the season uh, when we would first come back to uh, you know, get the cast prepped to uh, to get back to work and to talk about like some of the pressures of fame and like how to interview properly, but not about subject matter. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, we didn't we didn't go into too much depth, but they would try and prep us as much as they could. Um, for example, for the suicide one, they explained to us that they had to be very careful in how they portrayed an episode about suicide so that there wouldn't be copycats because that was the big thing. Nobody wanted to tackle that subject matter because they were worried about people yeah. wanting to emulate the character. So they had to be very careful in how they do that. So they would discuss that with us and kind of prep us um, and kind of, I guess, prepare us for, you know, how we would feel, you know, dealing with such a subject matter. And it was, I think this was definitely a new topic for a lot of us to, at that age, to really to to consider um, I certainly didn't what are the words it, it's funny because it's not funny mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. actually not funny at all but um, in retrospect now I think I would have had a harder time dealing with it because I lost my brother to suicide years later yeah. at that time it didn't mean as much to me it was definitely um, a severe topic, um, but the relationship was different too because mm -hmm. he was like, Claude was someone that Caitlin was trying to get out of her life at that time. So it was complicated, but in a different way. Um, and as actors, that's our job to try to, to, to get there and, and figure out what the emotional background is, what the baggage is and, and what we're going through. Uh, the divorce episode was actually based on my family. They had asked me if it was okay to, you know, to deal with that subject matter because my parents were going through a divorce. So that I was able to kind of bring my own experience to it. Um, the only other one that was pretty um, it, more intense for me was the epilepsy one. And that was one of my first serious episodes and I just really wanted to make sure that I did it justice. 
Um, I didn't know anything about epilepsy at the time, so I had to make sure I did my research. They provided me with uh, resources um, to help, you know, prep as well. So I hope I've answered your question. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good. Haven't had my coffee after lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, yeah. I told you. I told you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> If it's okay, I kind of got like two questions. One's like kind of classic Degrassi. The other one's actually just for Shane. So I'll start with the one. I like the Shane. classic. Oh, that's that's a great yeah. term. I like classic so, Degrassi. I figured I'd kind of change the topic actually because obviously this isn't Degrassi. So I was talking to Degrassi. You have your own new show that's currently on SwearNet. <laughs> which is obviously an entirely different demographic of viewership <laughs> yeah. than Degrassi. You have to ask, how did you originally get connected with Mike Smith? And of course, what's it like just doing a show on that particular network? Because it's kind of, as you already know, very risque. Yes. Uh, so I, I myself haven't uh, uh, met or, or worked uh, with Mike Smith or any of the Trailer Park Boys, but uh, the producer and uh, creator and, and my co-star, uh, Joshua Pryor, who you know as well, um, he uh, he came up with this idea, um, and he it was I was playing music uh, back in those days, and he uh, reached out to me through my band account because he didn't know any other way to get in touch with me, and uh, my band leader and singer at that point uh, said, "Hey, I, I got this uh, interesting email that maybe you should check out." Uh, so he was he was. Um, pitching me this idea for a show that he had, if I would be interested, he thought I would uh, be the the perfect co-star for him, and um, and I jumped on the phone with him. I, I just I had a good feeling about the guy, and uh, I thought I would do it. And then years later, so uh, Pat was actually in the uh, the uh, yeah what not not the. the um, What's it called? The proof of concept. The proof of concept. Yeah, pilot um, had a role in that too, which is uh, he played my dad. Mm -hmm. No, not my dad. My girlfriend's dad. Your girlfriend's dad. My girlfriend's dad. <laughs> and um, because this guy was a fan of Degrassi, and he he wanted to get as many of us together, but playing roles very different from what we were used to. Um, it's 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 great. Like I, some actors like to stay very you know in their whatever they're established as. They don't want to move too far out of that zone. I like to do like things as 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 different from my last project as possible, because um, I mean it's a very unique industry where you get to wear a whole bunch of different hats and play around, and no one's judging you for it. So uh, to go from a show that's like Degrassi, which has its dark elements, but still like very PG thirteen in in the way that in the language and and. Um, uh, I guess nudity and things like that, and then you go to one that's you know just f bombs left, right, and center, and <laughs> and very much like a documentary style, like shaky cam following you around all over the place, and a lot of improv. It, it was uh, it was a challenge, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, Josh is uh, is uh, still a great friend of mine uh, to this day. And uh, I, I mean, it's a low budget show, but I have I have a ton of fun working on it. So, if yeah. somebody wanted to see it, how do they find it? Uh, it's on it's on SwearNet, which is uh, the Trailer Park Boys uh, streaming service. Uh, so you just uh, SwearNet.ca, uh, and uh, you'll find everything you need to know about Green Mount. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. And Thank you. The other question, back to the grassy. This one might be a sensitive subject, and I don't think I've ever heard actually this get answered before, but the actor that played Wheels actually passed away, and I believe in the late 2000s. Did you guys ever get the opportunity to kind of reconnect with him and speak with him before his untimely passing? And of course, what was he like just as a human outside of the show? Which part do you want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say that it was year like none of us reconnected with him before his passing for years. Um, I guess the last time would have been you more recently than I did because you had that brief scene with him, did you not? In yeah, Neil Hope uh, played generation. in the reunion special, which is episode one, season one of The Next Generation. And then I believe uh, later on in the series, Snake uh, has cancer and Wheels comes back and, and goes bowling with Joey in the Zit Remedy. It's a Zit Remedy reunion, basically. And that was literally the last time we had seen him, and I believe Stefan interviewed him for a Degrassi documentary oh, yes. where he went out to Hamilton and inter interviewed Neil, and that was literally the last time Stefan would have seen him. Uh, Neil was a floater. He would bounce around from city to city. He would be in Vancouver for three months, and then Hamilton, and even his family had a hard time finding out where he was from time to time. He was m very much uh, a, a loner 
in the sense that he just um, wanted to live a normal life. Ever since he was 10 years old when he started on the kids of Degrassi Street, he'd always been on a TV show and then he had to understand this new reality that he was thrown back into, which was, you're no longer on a TV show, you're no longer a working actor, what do you do with your life? And he struggled with that journey uh, for years, and, and he basically, um, his family had to hire a private investigator to find out what happened, and, and we found out years later ourselves of his passing. So that's the explanation of what happened to Neil Hope. Um, maybe Stacy can give you a little bit of the kind of person he was uh, off the set. Well, sure, Neil and I, go way back. We went way back um, because we started on Kids of Degrassi Street. And so he was always like a brother to me. Uh, so much so that when I needed a roommate after the show ended, or even, uh, yeah, it was like right around Schools Out and Degrassi Talks, uh, we were roommates for a while. Um, and even then, you know, he was struggling. We all struggled a little bit, you know, after the show came to an end, trying to figure out what we wanted to do and, you know, where we were going in our lives. Um, and I think Neil just had a harder time than, than some of us did, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but a lovely guy. Like, he was, he was always, like, wanting to, like, look out for others, but... When it came to himself, he was just having, I think, a hard time really like looking after himself, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but the life of the party, he was always the one, the first one to say, let's hook up this weekend, have a good time, let's do something. And, yeah, um, he was all about living the life mm -hmm. and uh, having a good time. Um, yeah, and, and, and a very loyal person. I will say he was definitely a loyal person. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but very independent in a way too. Like like Pat said, like he would go off and then just disappear for a while. And like we just after um, we went our separate ways. I, I that was the last I saw him was when we we lived together and then went our separate ways. That was it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, there's not much more detail because really, even we ourselves don't have that much detail about what happened. So, um, like Shane said, many people, uh, the fans of the show, want to believe that we all stayed in touch and that we all hung out and that we're best friends forever. And it's just, you know, when the when the job is over, people kind of move on, and uh, you know, that's it. And like it, it, w with any place that you work, like you're you're lucky if if you're there for a couple of years. If years later you're talking to one person, and and that's still like that's. <laughs> That's a, a win. Like if you, if you, from every like section of your life, you bring like one true friendship along with you. But to to like stay in touch with twelve, fifteen, twenty people, mm -hmm. um, especially when years have gone by and you've gone very different ways, uh, you have very different lives now. You don't really have much in common except for that one amazing thing that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have a past, but you don't really have a future. <laughs> Yeah. So am I that one special thing that you took away? <laughs> you're, you're so much more than one special thing, Pat. Thanks. Thanks, Shane. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. I've come in from an hour away to see all of you. And this I've tried many times to get to see you, and it never, ever worked. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Mississauga. Nice. So as a, like a kid growing up, like I felt like you guys were part of my school. Mm. I don't know. I, maybe people mm. here felt the same. So social media opened it up, and I know that you're very active on there, Pat, and uh, yeah, we all you, you actually signed some stuff for me and sent it to me this year, <laughs> so I was quite happy about that. Awesome. Um, I, as a mom now, like I've got my kids here, and they've watched the show with me, and uh, this one here, she's 11, this is Cameron, she wants to know what Hi. your favorite episode to do was, or what, I guess, whichever one was most memorable for mm. you. I love that you're like passing this show on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had to. <laughs> so I had cool. to. Like I've watched all the way through. So, right on. I got goosebumps hearing that because yeah. <laughs> I have I have little kids. They're not quite there yet, but I will be doing the same thing. I wanted them to to know what I grew up watching, and yeah. it was you guys. And yeah. uh, I can't wait to do that. So that's great. <laughs> it's like see my friends again. You know, when yeah. I watched it with them, it was yeah. nice. So yeah. you get to relive it. But, yeah. Uh, so, so what, what so do you, you want think are your favorites? What are most memorable to you? Most memorable episode? Mm -hmm. Like your favorite one? That oh, oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Do you guys know off the top of your head? Well, I mean, for me, uh, School's Out is my most 
you know, enjoyable mm. moment on the whole experience of Degrassi. It was just Why, fun to Pat? do. I got lucky what? a couple it, times. I got lucky that. a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> got more action in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, being in the 80s, I wanted to do one cool 80s movie, like as an actor. I remember being a fan of Back to the Future, Karate Kid, and all those kind of uh, goofy teenage films that, that were around at the time, uh, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club, and so School's Out for me was that, and, and to have a, a, a part, uh, a decent part in a movie that, that took place over six weeks of filming, locations all over the place, really cool crazy things happening, F-bombs dropping all over the place, <laughs> um, and it was just a really amazing experience, and it's all encapsulated in this 90-minute film. Um, it was a, just a really cool experience because it was outside of the school, outside of the lockers, and it was just a really uh, different Degrassi, in my opinion. Yeah, it was always so. fun trying to recognize where you guys were. You know, mm. growing up in Mississauga, I was kind of familiar with the area. Oh. But. No, we were all over Toronto, though. Oh, Not, yeah. no, we, many of us didn't live in Mississauga. We were yeah. all over. But I, you know, yeah. I still recognize some of the areas. So mm. Oh, cool. you could recognize it on the show. Yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> Sure. Um, well, I obviously like for similar reasons. Uh, Spinner's final episode, the Degrassi takes Manhattan. It was like all Spinner all the time. So how could I not? <laughs> but but I got like there. There was so much that I had to, that I got to do. I was with two beautiful girls in that episode as well, and uh, got drunkenly married, and then uh, I got to work. Um, Colin Mockery, who's obviously like a staple in uh, Canadian in acting and comedy, uh, I grew up watching Whose Line Is It Anyway, and he got to play our divorce uh, divorce lawyer, and that, that was just a dream come true to be sitting across the table from him. But I had to be serious. I couldn't even joke around. When, uh, anyway, doesn't matter. And, um, and then two other, I, I got shot in uh, season eight or season nine. Uh, something like that, and I, I always wanted to get shot on camera uh, in a controlled situation. So, so that was cool to have a little to have a pack on, and um, and obviously uh, shaving my head on camera into the the mohawk, and then uh, beating the crap out of uh, my good friend, but at that point my mortal enemy. Um, yeah, those uh, <laughs> like Spinner's cancer storyline. So those those three are, are my favorite, most memorable. You got a lot of fun stuff to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was good good times. <laughs> um, I'd have to say, uh, like these two, um, it was when there was like different kind of like an action stuff to do. So it, most of the time we were shooting in the school. It was the same location. It got tiring, got boring. But so whenever we did something outside the school, like on location, that was exciting. And uh, the one time I got to, um, to try, I had to escape and climb the barbed wire fence. That was when we were spray painting. Claude and Caitlin were spray painting on a factory wall. And that was like action for me. I got to like do, like I got to climb like a barbed wire fence. And I thought that was cool. Um, it wasn't that cool, but to my mind it was cool. I was like, woohoo, action. Um, and then of course school's out because that was all on location. And like Pat said, it was the pinnacle um, of the show and a lot was happening in that show. So it was, there was um, a lot of places for, it was a journey for our characters to go on. Um, and it was more, it was a more professional shoot as because it was the first time the show was union, I should also say, like all the other Degrassi shows that we had done were non-union, low budget. Not that this one felt like it was a lot higher budget, but it was definitely, um, it felt more professional, I think. And it just, you know, we got to sign contracts, we got to like <laughs> kind of renegotiate a little bit. It just Absolutely. felt more mature. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'd say the, those two probably were mine. Yes. Anything else? No. 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 Will there be another gathering like the big uh, Degrassi Palooza at all ever? <laughs> Ask Pat. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyers said I wasn't allowed to do the first one. <laughs> um, Yet you did it anyway. But yeah, like as it. soon as I had announced ticket sales for Degrassi Palooza, the, the people that now own the Degrassi. Yeah. Uh, brand they bought it from the, the original producers their lawyer called me up and said uh what you doing <laughs> and uh, you know you're not allowed to use our name to create an event and i'm like yeah but i'm celebrating the show's co-creator the head writer 25 cast it's gonna be great don't worry you know and uh they go yeah but you're not allowed to do that so uh we're gonna let you do it this one time but so don't don't ever do it again i'm like okay you know so out of respect because i mean again 
this is a brand. Degrassi is an iconic brand, and to just have anybody willy nilly use it and create an event or a convention or mm -hmm. what, that's that's not good. You know, mm. I see kids all over the world selling Degrassi swag, like T-shirts and like on Etsy or Shopify or eBay. And I'm like, man, that's all copyright infringement. And you gotta be careful because they'll come after you. And especially now that HBO Max is coming out with a new Degrassi, um, it's gonna be even a bigger company protecting that brand and mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, no more goofing around. Like back in the old days when I would sell a Zit Remedy shirt, uh, <laughs> Linda Schuyler, our producer, would look at me going, you know, come on, Pat. You know, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. I'm like, oh, come on, Linda. It's just fun. So, you know, I, I have to respect the fact that this is a major corporation, a company that has paid a lot of money for the Degrassi brand, and and I need to respect the fact that I don't have any legitimacy to that name. I, I just worked on the show, but um, yeah. So I always find that fine line uh, between honoring and respecting that show and the legacy and the, our roles in it, and and you know, being careful not to go to jail. Well, we're, we're glad that you, you're trying to keep, you know, keep it going, you know, for yeah. the fans. I know I speak for myself, but I'm sure everybody here feels the same, that we're grateful that you do what you do to keep it going. So. Yeah. We're well, grateful. And that, that's why we do do these things yeah. when yeah. we can, because it's a nice way for us to engage without getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, you said it so beautifully at Palooza. You said, thank you, because you guys make us feel like we did something important with our <laughs> lives. <Yeah. laughs> you know, in the moment, it was a very emotional moment uh, at Palooza. Yeah, thank you. Thank you're you're thank so you. much of that is is all, like, you could thank Pat for that, for, for organizing... Palooza or, or even um, having us That's at these true, festivals. Yeah. He's, uh, it, it was him as the, the crown jewel and then like opening up this world to the rest of us. So. It's fun. It's a fun world yeah. of conventions and screenings. Mm -hmm. I love doing it and I love that you guys love doing it. And I think as for selling things, you just have to learn to say allegedly a little bit more <laughs> and there's a lot of deniability. Allegedly. Just saying. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> before we get to our next question, uh, do you have any Zit Remedy uh, t-shirts? Uh, no, no, I'm done. I'm allegedly. Done for, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. No. Awesome. Go ahead. Hi, Gary. Hi. Hi. Uh, I think this question's been asked before, but I love movie and TV memorabilia, so I'm going to ask it again. I know you've had some great online auctions of Degrassi memorabilia, and so I was wondering if each of you had your own personal favorite memory or part of the show that you've taken home and will probably never let go of. Cheap any heirlooms? I did, but I gave it to Kevin Smith. <laughs> I had my epilepsy bracelet. Oh, wow. Because that meant something to me. I thought I had two of them, but I, I guess I don't because I, I can't find the other one. So, But Kevin Smith has one of them. I don't know what he did with it. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, I actually, the, I was able to take some wardrobe home with me. Actually, it's not true. It, it's not from officially from Degrassi, but from the Drake uh, music video, I took that suit. Nice. <laughs> yeah. oh, nice. They they put safety pins in it. And I'm like, you can't use this, right? And before they could answer, I was out the door. So. <laughs> I stole a fedora. Uh, I still have an original fedora from the Degrassi uh, Next Generation uh, episode one. Um, a fan? No, not a fan. He was a guy selling street signs on Kijiji. I. I I emailed him and I said, sir, I need this street sign. He was selling a Degrassi street, an original Degrassi <laughs> street sign. And I literally ran downtown to meet him to pick it up and buy it off of him. So I love the, because I'd always driven by that street. Mm -hmm. I'd always heard the stories of people stealing that street sign. And it was one of the top <laughs> street signs stolen in oh, Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That in High Street. High Street. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I just loved, I loved having it. And it's, it's an original street sign. So that's one of my prized possessions. Nice. Oh, thanks. No problem, my friend. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> I never even thought of it. Uh, I just oh, want to know. Yeah. I think I have three friends that have high street That's in there. Right? Yeah. Oh my God. Did you blow his mind when you showed up? Yeah, he kind of got the feeling that uh, who, who I was, and when he saw me in person, he goes, "I, I thought it was you." No, <laughs> Do you still take your money, or give it to you? He still took my money. Oh, what a bastard! <laughs> <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He took my money, and I did a photo op with him too. I, I took a take picture of him. Take your money. Yeah. You never They'll take your money, man. <laughs> So, uh, Shane, yeah. you mentioned earlier that you had worked with Colin Mockery uh, yeah. on the show, and uh, obviously it's, uh, he, he's such a, an iconic uh, comedian and, and actor. Yeah. Uh, did you, any, is there any other actors or people that you've worked with that you really, really enjoyed uh, doing it, whether they were famous or not? I mean, I mean, we all work with people we love to work with. but 
Yeah. Um, well, for me, uh, also in that episode, I, I can't remember her, her name. She was a, a judge on um, So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, uh, she was... I'll let you think about that. I worked with yeah. Brooke Shields. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, I yeah. started doing Hallmark movies back in the day. I, don't, I no longer act, but when I was still acting, I got to do some of those, not, not cheesy, but you know what well, I mean. they're pretty cheesy. Hallmark uh, <laughs> yeah. Christmas movie kind of you know, movie of the weeks. But uh, Brooke Shields was lovely to, to work with and, and a professional and very kind. And, and uh, that was, it's always nice when you meet your heroes or your mm -hmm. childhood celebrities and, and they're actually down to earth people, yeah. which is a rarity in our industry. So, um, you know, I hope that when we meet our fans that they walk away going, man, that Shane was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. Um, for me, uh, uh, Kevin Smith, obviously. Kevin Smith and uh, <laughs> thanks, man. Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes, uh, because I, I, I was, I wouldn't say like a huge fan, but it was, like enough of a fan to be like, oh, like this is this is next level. They also brought Alanis Morissette um, on set as well. That's who I was. Um, so I was a, a huge fan of uh, the Jagged Little Pill album and, and things after that. So having them there, but I'll still never forget when I came to set that day. I am like 16 years old, 17 years old. And um, I'm walking through the back lot to the stairs that go up to the dressing rooms. And um, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes are there loitering and I think selling wheat. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just like, uh, hey, guys, I'm, I'm Shane. And Kevin just, he's like, yeah, dude, I know who you are. I'm like, you, you know who I am? Wow. Um, so there was that. And also, like, the, this one is uh, with a heavy heart now. But uh, I didn't get to work with him. But I was on a promo tour in Vegas. And um, I'm walking through the lobby uh, of a hotel, and uh, I look across. I'm like, guys, guys, guys! I was there with a few Degrassi cast. I'm like, guys, guys, it's, it's Bob Saget, <laughs> and wow. and Bob is, was a, a very tall guy. Yeah. He's like six three, and when I'm doing that, he looks over at me, and he's with an assistant. And he's like, hey, stop, stop, stop! <laughs> he makes a beeline right over to me, oh, wow. and he's like, I am a huge, huge fan oh, of your show. Wow. I watch it with my kid. And then he looks around and he's like, oh my God, the, the, you're all here. All right, <laughs> let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. Shook my hand with two hands. Wow. Uh, very, wow. very genuine. And yeah, yeah, it was, it was a nice moment. Very cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Hi. Hey. Hello. I was just curious. Um, I know you said you like to do different roles, which is good, but mm -hmm. what was the transition like from doing something like Degrassi to something like Dog Pound? Oh. <laughs> and also, just curious if there was any um, doubles or if that's your cute little freckle. <laughs> <laughs> Something we should know about. <laughs> it turns red. <laughs> have you uh, have you not seen on Netflix the picture that they've used no. for the dog pound? Uh, no. Share. All right. Well. <clears throat> Uh, Does anybody under 16 have to leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> I welcome everybody to okay. stay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it was, like I said, it was, it was very exciting. For, that, that was the first time that I filmed out of province. And um, like when, when you film in Toronto, even if you're on different sets, uh, it, it's, a, it's a small community of uh, working actors and the crew. Like they, they're here one day, then they're on this set, then they're on this set. But I went somewhere I didn't know anybody. Um, the, the team uh, that created Dog Pound, uh, they were from Paris. Uh, we're filming in New Brunswick. Uh, so there was a lot of crew in from uh, Quebec. Uh, but it was, it was different. And, uh, but I, I loved it because it, it was a chance to do something like very gritty. There was a lot of swearing, a lot of improv. Um, and it, it was set in a prison, like as, as far a departure from Degrassi as, right. as you could get. <laughs> now, as for yours, yeah. yeah, as for the second part of that, and, and you know, that scene that you're talking about right there, uh, my, the intro, of the, the first scene of the movie, uh, where it starts out in a in a very uh, yeah. you know tight shot nice situation with uh, with a uh, with a lady who mm -hmm. I had just met that was uh, that was the very first scene of the first day of shooting oh great and oh, that God. was at six thirty in the morning wow. and I'm like nice to meet you I'll be the guy in between your legs and <laughs> wow <laughs> but uh, yeah so that was fun um, but uh, that like that naked shot and all those yeah the <laughs> I had never had to do a scene where they're like, all right, so here's your wardrobe. It's a sock, and you just put it over that. That's, and that's it. all you get. Um, but, that was but, warm in there, at least. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> I asked them to turn the heat way up. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it was fun. He actually, the director was like, uh, would you guys mind uh, like not wearing anything? And, and we're all like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to just stand there. Anyway, that, yeah. it, it was interesting. It, it was fun looking back on it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna let that go for <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can. No, no. You can I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to indulge. No, no, no. It's good. Moving you on. Can indulge. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to be cryptic with a lot of no, the I, I, there, I get that. And it, it's yeah. almost like that. Too bad that wasn't the last question of yeah, the. Right. Uh, <laughs> a great way to end. Everybody's end everything. gonna be watching. It felt now. like the mafia. <laughs> yeah, you know the the scene with the guy and yeah. the thing and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's but so we still have a few minutes, so yep. please go ahead. So I have sort of two sort of questions. I was watching a documentary on the show, and I remember reading somewhere that Tori Spelling's dad, Aaron Spelling, the great producer, originally wanted to buy Degrassi before it became what it was, and she said, no, is that true? And also, were you guys aware that in the episode where Heather and Erica wasn't pregnant, they were going to have the abortion, my friends, I'm a huge Tori Amos fan, and my friends say in the States, they don't show that. It ends with her turning her head, but when we watched it, we started going into the clinic. They're very prudish there. I didn't know that, that a lot of the episodes you guys did, they add some things there, so it ends in a different way than what we saw as a kid. I didn't know right. that. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I'll, I'll answer and, and redo the question. So the first yeah. question was, uh, was it true that Aaron Spelling wanted to buy the series back in the day from uh, Linda Schuyler and Kit Hood originally? This, this is Tori Spelling's dad. Dad, dad. yeah. yeah. Uh, creator Crazy of Angels, yeah. Dynasty, Love yeah. Boat. Love so Boat. that was very true. And um, what happened was he basically wanted to buy the brand, the name Degrassi, and fire all the cast, replace the entire cast with a you know, more more attractive cast, uh, more attractive setting, awesome. and basically <laughs> just redo the whole series. And Linda Schuyler and Kid Hood were like, what are you talking about? This is our show, this is our creative baby, and we're not gonna change anything about it. Thank you very much. And so Aaron said, okay, you're not gonna sell me the show, fine. Can you just send me a few scripts and a few episodes so I can get a feel for what the show is? <laughs> if you watch the first three episodes of 90210, they are exact ripoffs of Degrassi episodes, word for word, mm -hmm. um, and, and basically Aaron used our show as the foundation, but in Beverly Hills, and that, the how, rest is history. How much had you guys filmed before he wanted to buy it? Or was it oh, I think we had done the first maybe season, season and a half of, of okay, the show, and then he know. wanted to buy it. Um, in regards to your second question, it was, uh, in the Twins episode where one of the characters has an abortion, in the States, they had changed the ending from the one that we saw here in Canada. Yeah, yeah. It was on and PBS. They did yeah. a PBS I'll version. I'll let you answer that. Um, oh, well, that's all you... I know. It oh, like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all um, I know. So, yes, uh, we had been many, many times with many, many episodes preempted in the States because uh, uh, we were on PBS, which was a, a public broadcasting station. They had certain not mandates, but certain restrictions that they couldn't have certain language or certain topics discussed. So the, I think uh, the abortion uh, yeah. uh, storyline was one that was completely removed from PBS. In, in, in England, I don't know if they played mm -hmm. any of the Spike pregnancy episodes in England on the BBC. Uh, so yeah, we were preempted in many different countries in many different episodes in the one you're talking about with the little baby, um, uh, and the twins turn around to see the yeah. fetus that the lady was holding up. That was completely removed. Yeah. Uh, basically, the lady says, says the line, you know, that's your baby. And then the girls turn around, and that's where they froze yeah. in the States. So that they didn't, yeah. it was too much for, in yeah. the States. The one thing I'm proud of, and I've said this before, is that in Canada, like the network like a, never... Okay. Uh, preempted or took away any of our episodes. They were always aired the way the producers made them, the way they wanted it to be seen, and nobody ever edited us down here in Canada. We actually got to see the creators. There was no censorship. Original vision, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of cool that yeah. Canada, this little country, can, you know. In, in the last panel, talking with Amanda, uh, Amanda and uh, William from Fright Night, of course, mm -hmm. she, uh, Amanda did um, uh, Married with Children, and we asked about uh, censorship, and she said it was... <laughs> very prevalent, uh -huh. uh, even with as edgy a show as Married with Children was, they certainly did see their fair share of, of the censors, and it's great to know that your show, when, when we watched it, we weren't watching anything edited. That's great. Correct. Yeah, yeah. no, it, yeah. it was kind of like shocking for us to even know that some, it, they said some of our episodes were banned in the BBC. Like, they yeah, just, it's like, wow, yeah. we're like... <laughs> 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I had one last comment to Stacy because I, I had epilepsy as a kid. I don't remember about it as a kid, so I thought, I thought it was authentic because I knew going with the epilepsy of the wires. And I had went through that, so I was like, hey, that's that, that's what I went through. Because <laughs> I have a twin brother. We were born with hydrocephalus, so we had two seizures. We were, we were really really young. So that episode was always my remembered because I went through all that myself. So amazing. I well, that. I'm I'm glad that it felt like relatable then because yeah. that's you know obviously what we were going for. I learned a lot. From, yeah, I always say experience. the best teen shows are always from Canada. You guys, <laughs> Mastin, and um, Ready or Not. Ready or Not. All the American ones, they're all like 30 or 40 playing high school kids, and you're like, you could be my mom or my dad. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, right? We had no makeup. We yeah. had a the clothes that were really ours for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. 80s hair. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, just a quick side note about yeah. Married with Children, because I was a huge fan of it. I um, The unintended consequences of censorship sometimes, uh, it was the spotlight like turned on that show because of how many people wanted it off the air is yeah. what turned it yeah. into the the mega success course, that it was. Yeah. Yeah. True. So it was every episode, every week, you wanted to know well, where are they going like, to go this week? Or it's like, <laughs> what, why are they? What's wrong with this show? Why is it so disgusting? Why do people want to go? This is hilarious. And now uh, you know they're they're still all working and doing oh, yes. very well today. Yeah, so <laughs> absolutely, good. absolutely. Yeah. Who lasts last? Okay. So my question is, I just popped my head now, but uh, I don't know if they, it exists or not, but do you know if, if it doesn't, will there be any pop dolls made of Degrassi? <laughs> oh, Funko Pop, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Funko Pop. Funko, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know what that is. Yeah, no, no, I know you do. I was the one that found out about those last, actually. <laughs> My girlfriend was not too pleased. Uh, again, I, I, I reached out to Funko Pop, and I said, is it possible that we could do a Degrassi line of Funko Pops? And the very first thing out of their mouth is, do you own the IP? Do you own the name Degrassi? Oh. And I'm like, right, allegedly. Can. Okay, allegedly, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so... The, the people that currently own the series, they're not really interested in marketing and branding and, and, and dolls and shirts. And that's not what their business is. Their business is buying up shows and redistributing them around the world. Like okay. they're a distributor. And so when it comes to fun merch and, and swag and things like that that the fans want, are interested in, they're just not in that business. Oh, they okay. don't care about any of that stuff. That's too bad. Um, okay, thank it you. It is too bad, yeah. Um, but I've seen fans make them. Oh, I, yeah. I know there's a fan that made a Joey. They sell and a, blanks and then they make their own. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah on yeah. Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, again, on Etsy, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> like Lego uh, figures. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have an Etsy shop? <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. I haven't, I haven't no. looked up a Degrassi uh, Etsy, but I've looked up yeah. other other shows and the characters that don't exist and they do an Etsy, so yeah. Yeah. Oh. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be fun. I'd love to be a Funko yeah. Pop. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. We, we were comics. We, we were in graphic novels. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that was cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like uh, Degrassi, what was it called? Extra credit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if I can't be uh, an action figure or a Funko Pop, <laughs> I'll take, uh, you know, comic an artistic rendition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great, guys. Um, we're starting to get to the end of our time, but okay. uh, maybe we'll give everybody a chance to take a few minutes before you're back at your booth. And we yep. really, again, appreciate you guys all coming here and appreciate you guys coming and asking questions and taking Thank photos. you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Pat, very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.